everything has to be supercharged, the max. And so the question is, can you actually supercharge your soil? And the answer is technically you could with a few adjustments. So today we're gonna learn how to supercharge your soil in five very easy steps. So step number one is hands down solarization. Solarization allows for your soil to fight against pests. Also helps your soil expedite the process of decomposition, which ultimately help with mineral mobilization and bioavailability of several different nutrients. I did a whole video on solarization. So I suggest you go check that out if you wanna learn more on the process of solarization and how it makes a difference. Next up is actually inoculation. So when I say inoculation, I'm not just talking about mycorrhizal. Yes, that is right. Turns out the gardening community does not yet realize that you cannot just add mycorrhizal fungi to your garden. You can add rhizobium bacteria, which actually amps up your nitrogen fixation. Whether you're using clover, peas, beans, any form of legume, you can add rhizobium bacteria. You can also add phosphate solubilizers or just any mineral solubilizers. There's very specific microbes that do this in the soil and you can inoculate your soils with this. Now, it doesn't have to be a store-bought mycorrhizal fungi, such as Dymaco, for example. It can actually just be as simple as adding different forms of compost. So if you use vegetable compost one year, try mushroom compost the next, it can be adding different forms of manure. So sheep, cow, guano, you name it are all different forms of microbe profiles, or it could be actually going into ecosystems in your area and capturing healthy soil microbes from an aspen bluff, a prairie landscape, the boreal forest that survive in your zone and inoculating your compost or your soil with those. And if you want a video on that and how to do that, then just let me know in the comments down below and, I, and I'll help you out with that whole process. But really simply, the more microbes, the better. And this goes for both organic people and the conventional people. Microbes benefit both groups. Next up, and I'm, if you've been on the channel long enough, you already know what this is gonna be. Test your pH and figure out if you need lime or sulfur. So if you are in Saskatchewan, Alberta, Manitoba, or under those provinces, if you're in the US, it's highly likely that you're going to need elemental sulfur because your soil is most definitely alkaline. And I have a soil testing video coming up very soon where I'm gonna use two different kits, my two favorite forms of kits, side by side to see if they both give similar results. And I'm gonna be doing it on my tomato beds because those are actually getting redone this year. And I wanna know what I need to amend them with because there's no easier time to do it than when you're initially building the bed. So I'm gonna be uploading a video on that, but test your soil pH and adjust accordingly. Like I said, elemental sulfur for pretty much any province that's a prairie province or part of the Great Plains if you're in the States. There's the odd place that'll need lime, but like I said, test and then apply as needed. Okay, so this one I don't know if I talked about much. I think the only time I've spoken to this has been when I did the video kind of talking about why Kevin tilled his garden and why I thought it was a good idea. And in that, I explained aeration. So if you did not know this, microbes and macrofauna thrive in an aerobic environment. And classically speaking, an aerobic environment only exists in that top two feet of the soil, if that. And over time, our soil will compact through foot traffic. If you walk on it when it's wet, it will compact. That's why lawns always get so damaged is because people walk on them when they're wet. It also will compact just from snowpack. In time, it'll settle. So despite doing no-till, if you're dealing with a mineral soil and not a compost, you will see some compaction. And you may want to look at aeration. Now, it doesn't have to be an aeration in the form of tillage. It can be aeration in the form of using a broad fork, a pitch fork, any sort of fork, shoving it in the ground and actually pulling it back. This aeration is gentle yet effective and works well. So give that a shot. This one's bizarre, but I live by it now. My father-in-law blessed me with this once and it's very simply watering with warm water. So I saw absolute exponential growth when I began watering my plants with sun warmed water from an animal trough. Now, the reason for that is because I was just first establishing a garden in that lot or on that property and there was no water or even hoses long enough to get to there. So I hand watered everything. Yes, I know I'm crazy, but that warm water that was sitting in that trough every single day because I didn't know how to operate the water lever thingy, it caused exponential growth. It's because the plant roots, the soil microbes, 
and just overall decomposition in that soil and health of that soil is exponentially better when we're not constantly shocking it with cold water. Rain that falls down from the sky midsummer tends to be kind of warm. It's not cold like out of the tap. That is also the reason why I use a bucket of water with my seedlings that I allow the sun to heat throughout the entire day. It's really important. It makes a big difference even in these little pots. So utilizing sun warmed water whenever possible, whether that be capturing rain from a rain barrel or using some sort of bucket system outdoors where you warm tap water, it's gonna make a huge difference and you really should give it a try. Okay, last one, I promise, mulch. Yes, mulch. Now, this doesn't have to be particularly sophisticated whatsoever. It doesn't have to be fresh wood chips. It doesn't have to be fancy straw that's been chopped up into a million pieces. It could be grass, and that's what I use. It's grass. Grass works absolute wonders. Now, I'm running out of grass in my yard because I'm slowly turning everything into a garden. So this year, I may need to use straw, but for years, I used grass. Another really good option would actually be to use leaves. I have my big leaf pile behind me to kind of add to my compost when needed. And those leaves, if I was to take a whippersnipper and stick it in a garbage can and whip them up to a really nice fine particulate size, similar, similar to that of grass, they will give us a very similar result. The key with the mulch is wood chips do not work wonders, but pine shavings or shavings of wood do. And same with grass. If I was to use entire blades of grass or entire blades of straw or hay, I won't get the same results that I would if I had cut grass or shredded leaves. The finer the material, the better it is giving us that moisture retention, but also that weed suppression. So mulch, another way to supercharge your soil, not to mention it also inflates the soil. So if you put the mulch on at the right time, usually after everything sprouted and the soil has warmed up, you can insulate the soil with some heat long term until the fall months hit and you will have warmer soil for longer. Another pro tip there. So I hope this helped you guys out with supercharging your soil. And ultimately there's really no wrong way to garden. Be your own garden scientist and I will talk to you next time. Bye.